Hey, 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 it is time for our garland tutorial. It's going to coordinate with our lemon drop gnome home decor set. So far, we have painted the door hanger that has ribbon legs, right? We've also painted our attachment shelf sitter, a tear tray piece. This can be anything you want it to be, but I have put Velcro on it and I'm going to attach it to my porch cleaner as the O in the welcome. And now we're going to paint the third piece that goes along with this set, which is the six piece garland. So y'all hop on, tell me that you're here to tell me where you're watching from. If you're catching the replay, make sure you put hashtag replay. I am pulling up our live as we speak and we will get to painting. So it is Friday. It is a gusty Friday at that here in Louisiana. Um, and it is actually, I'm not, I'm not hating it. It's actually really nice. It's really nice outside. We have had a chance of rain all slap day and it just has not done anything. It hasn't done a thing. Okay. So I'm going to move this all the way. We're not necessarily going to need many paintbrushes um, until later. We're going to do some shading and all that jazz. But first we're going to start off with our favorite part, the stenciling. So we have talked about how stenciling with makeup sponges, you don't have to just get rid of them, right? You can, you can move, you can boot scoot and boogie many projects along without having to switch makeup sponges. So the, I did, what was this? I bet you it was this part. I stenciled here on the, the um, lemon drop popsicle earlier this week and the yellow has dried. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to take a pair of scissors and snip that off. I'm just snipping off the dried part, okay? And we're just gonna throw that away. Hey, Deanna, how are you doing? And we are going, I'm gonna stack these. I have three of each color. This is Sea Breeze, this is Banana Cream, or you could use Sunny Day. They're practically the same color. And all the leaves are base coated Hauser Lights. There we go. Let me pull my shading color for the um, yellow just so I have it. So I know exactly. Okay, there's my marigold. Okay, so I've got I've got sea breeze and desert turquoise. You could also use Laguna or bluegrass green or any of those turquoisey colors. Um, you can use any of those. I've got my Hauser Light. We're also going to use Hauser Medium and Hauser Dark, so get those ready. I have Banana Cream. You could also use Sunny Day, practically the same color. And I'm using Marigold. You could also use Antique Gold or um, Deep Ochre. Any of those would work as well. So I'm just going to set those off to the side. We're going to stencil on one and polka dot on the other. Let me pull my... Let me see which one we did in the mock-up. Looks like we stenciled on the blue one. So let's do that. So all I'm going to do, y'all know I love to use my straight from the bottle color to make my stenciling color, okay? So anytime I do stencils, polka dots, anything like that, I like a barely there texture. So I don't like my stenciling or my polka dots to be very distracting. So that's bare, That's what I call barely there. Like it's it's enough to change the base coat color, but not enough to be distracting. Okay. I like a barely there look. I think it gives it a nice and soft look. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take my sea breeze, which is what this base coat color is. Okay. I'm going to grab a little bit of white. Okay. It does not matter what kind of white you have. Hey, Anna, um, I'm using cool white, but you can use titanium white. Okay, so I've got those side by side. I've got my makeup sponge and I'm going to pick the same stencil that we used on the popsicle just to have a little bit of cohesiveness. You know, have things kind of flow and look like they're all one big piece uh, uh, set. So I'm just gonna use that. You know my favorite, absolute favorite stencil is the cheetah print stencil, so. It's kind of killing my soul not to use that, but we, we, it's okay to, to be, uh, to break the mold a little bit. It's okay to do things differently. All right. So I'm just loading up my sponge 
with the with the um sea breeze so i'm just picking up sea breeze i loaded it up okay i'm just i dipped it in and i'm tapping most of it off okay you notice me traveling on my palette okay i'm getting a lot of it off we don't want it to be super soppy wet now i'm going to pick up just a little bit of white okay and we're going to mix that those two together And that's going to give us our shade. Just our, our shade or two off, right? So I'm going to stencil the entire lemon minus the leaves. I'm going to be careful not to stencil the leaves. But if I do, it's no big deal. I can just go back in and base coat the leaves. No biggie, right? Uh-oh, my stencil is shifted. Okay, there we go. That's what I get for not, for not taping it down. But even if I get a little bit on the leaves, I can always take a baby wipe and wipe it away, right? When you're stenciling, you're using the lightest layer of paint that you could possibly use. Let's see. Hey, Cynthia. I hope your little one is, she is feeling better. She is feeling much better. She went to school today, although... <laughs> funny story. She woke up. So whenever she's like that, whenever she's super congested like that, I have her sleep with me. Um, only because she does not get good sleep at all unless someone's there to kind of keep her propped up. Oh my, I keep shifting my, but that's okay. I can line it up. Uh, so I spent all night propping her up and we gave her some allergy medicine before she went to bed and it always gives her bad dreams. So <laughs> like, like usual, it did. It gave her some bad dreams. So the last couple of nights that she's had this medicine, she kept saying the word no, like as if she was yelling at someone saying no, like as if someone was hurting her. And it really broke my heart to hear her say it. So she's yelling at someone in her dream. No, no, no. And then last night she finally got out a full sentence. She's, it, she's sleeping away, you know, off into Slumberville. Right. And all of a sudden she goes, no, no, I'm not going to school. I'm not going to school. And I'm sitting there going, is that what she's been yelling the last couple of nights? It's like, I'm over here feeling bad about her nightmares, thinking someone is chasing her. And she's over here saying, no, I don't want to go to school. So, ta-da, isn't that pretty? So, naturally, since I had to stay up listening to all that, she went to school. She went to school today. Spoiler alert. She went to school. All right. So I'm going to, I'm just moving my stencil around. I want to get different pieces of the stencil, but I also want to make sure that the entire lemon gets stenciled. I don't want any parts that look kind of funky without stenciling. Here we go. Let's do, let's do that. Okay. So let's, you notice I have not reloaded my makeup sponge yet, but I am now. But when I do, it tends to get real tacky because I'm adding liquid, you know, more paint to my sponge. When I do that, if you notice, I didn't go to the big puddle. I went to this over here that I kind of created my own shade. It has less paint over there. Plus, it's already pre-mixed. And it's going to add just the right amount of, of paint to my, to my sponge without oversaturating it. When you oversaturate it, that's when you uh, can get the problems of bleeding underneath your stencil. You can, you can cause so much. It gets too much of a soppy mess on your project. It takes longer to dry. All that mess. We don't want any of that. All we want is a nice, clean stencil. So yes, she is doing much better, although she was not a happy camper when she woke up and she found out she was going to school. She woke up, uh, another sentence that she said was along the same lines, it was, no, I'm not going to school. I'm sick. <laughs> I'm like, oh, girl. <laughs> oh, no, ma'am. Oh, my goodness. Look at that. Just 
it's so pretty. I love this technique. It's barely there. So this is that first one that we did. Okay. It's barely there, but it's so pretty. I hope y'all can see that. It's so pretty. The camera is not like showing it at, I mean, it, you can see it a little bit better in real life than you can on this camera, but it is so pretty. Okay. So is this drying out on my palette? I probably need to get a little bit more. So I'm going to try and hold my stencil down. It likes to bounce, especially this particular one. Not all my stencils bounce as much as this one does. So like I said, I'm just, I'm just stenciling away until I get closer to those leaves. And then I start being really fussy about where my, my makeup sponge is landing. There we go. So I'm going to transfer my fingers. There we go. All right, so bouncy. But someone was asking me the other day if I sold stencils. I do not. I don't sell stencils. Um, I typically buy most of my stencils. I do make some. I use my Cricut and make some of my stencils. If I can't find what I'm looking for, I will bust out my Cricut and create one. But I'm not necessarily a file creator. I do make templates. I do design, but I don't, I don't necessarily create like SVGs and stencils require SVG format. Um, maybe in a later life <laughs> when I'm not working two jobs. Um, I might add that to the list because I do, y'all know me, I love working with stencils. I love them so much and I think they add so much to our projects, but I just, I don't think I would be able to do it and do it right, you know, the right way if I were to add that to my, to my list now. But I do like to buy them and I buy them from Hobby Lobby, I buy them from Michaels, I buy them um, from individual sellers. Um, I've, anytime I go to a craft fair, there's sometimes there's a stencil maker there. My, uh, the retreat that I'm going to in April, she's actually a stencil maker. Like, so I'm going to be talking to her. I'm going to talk to her and, and, and see what's going on with her stencils. And she sells stencil files. So I, and I'm going to talk to her and see if she has any kind of, plan in the future to sell actual stencils and then probably reach out. I probably will reach out to a company. I don't know. I haven't decided yet, but I use enough stencils that it would make sense for me to have some stencils or some way of getting y'all stencils. You know what I mean? Kind of like the blanks. Hey, Sheila. I'm so excited. I can't wait to see you. We're going to, I'm going to see you here soon. I was just talking about you this morning. I was talking to another one of the presenters that's coming to the retreat. And I was saying, I'm excited about some of my studio girls that are going to be there. Hey, Marie. Oh, wait, we can't talk about the retreat. Marie has FOMO. Marie has FOMO. So I have been riding around all day today with yellow paint on my nails and didn't realize it. There's been yellow paint. Like, there's still yellow paint on this one. I can't get it off. I don't know what this yellow, it has got a hold on me. Okay, so these yellow ones are not getting a stencil, okay? So these will go a little bit faster because they are getting a polka dot. So let's bust out my big bag of polka dots. And my bag is getting empty, which means they're, they're floating around here somewhere. I know I have some on my counter that I just freshly washed. But my bag of polka dot daubers is getting kind of sad looking. I'm going to use... Let's use this one. This is another, I think this is a Walmart or a, no, this is a Dollar Tree one. I love the ones from the Dollar Tree. They're, they're good quality. They're good quality. So I'm going to get banana cream, sunny day, whichever one you're using. Okay. And again, we're going to, we're going to use white. Okay. So I'm just going to load up my polka dot sponge with 
the sunny day. And then I'm going to come over here, add some white, although I may need to get a clean puddle of white because that's so close to the blue, it may contaminate it. Okay, so I'm just adding white and I'm creating my own little shade of yellow over here. Again, it's going to be a barely there color. We're not going for a huge transition here. See, somehow there is blue. There's blue. See if I can erase that blue. Yeah, better. So I'm just going to put a couple of polka dots. This is a very big polka dot sponge. You can go smaller if you want. And then I'm going to do a couple off of the edge. Look at that. Barely there. I love how it's just barely there. Pick different spots. I'm going to try and make them not so matchy matchy. The best thing you can do when you're doing polka dots is to make sure that you don't have, you don't try to make all your polka dots be one full polka dot, right? You want, you want them to be half polka dots and corn, like trail in the corner over there. Um, let's see if I can. Let's see if I can kind of protect this green. And it's okay if it gets on there. Watch this. I'll show you what I can do if it gets on the green. Okay, so it did get on the green a little bit. So I'm done with this polka dot sponge. So I'm going to put it in my water. Just keep it wet. You can also put it in a Ziploc bag and close it up. The Ziploc bag will seal it off to where all the wet in the paint, it'll keep the paint wet. It won't let it dry out, but you have to, I mean, you can't just leave it like that. There we go. So there's that. Oh, you know, I lied. Oh no, I just put it in the water. Let's see if I have another one that same size. If not, I have one similar in size. Oh, that's not the same size. Oh no. Okay, I'm gonna have to dry that out. I put it straight up in the paint water thinking I was done. I was not, I have one whole. So I'm squeegeeing out as much water as I can. And I'm taking a tea towel. So this is like a hand towel that you would either uh, put in your kitchen as a dish towel or a hand towel in the bathroom. Okay. Yeah, that's good enough. So I've got it. It's damp, but it's not super, it's not super wet. Luckily, I, the whole thing did not go in water. It was, it was just kind of grazing the top of the water. All right, let's reload it with yellow. Okay. Remember, we got to put a little white in there. I knew I was... I was jumping ahead a little, a little too soon. All right, so make sure you you really twist it and and prime, uh, get it primed. Okay. There's that. I'm just gonna give this a little touch. Just touch it up a little bit. Okay. There we go. Now we can put this in water. We are done with it. You still have another. Oh, see, there's Cynthia looking out for me. I just didn't see it in time. Um, it's okay. Just think of me the whole time y'all are there and send me pics. I will send you plenty of pics. Erica, how are you? But I'm here. I'm good. I'm it's Friday. It's Friday. That is, and I got to spend a good bit of it up at school. I don't normally spend Fridays up at the school, but today I got to dote on on this on the some of the kids in the class. Um, we have houses. It's an awesome idea that uh, the teacher that I help. Her name is uh, Melody. She 
she came up with the idea. Usually you do it in like lower level classes, like elementary and middle school. Well, she decided let's, let's try it out in high school. So it's almost like Harry Potter. They've got houses, right? And all the kids in her class have been divided up into these four houses and everything they do, they're eligible to get points. Well, they can also get points taken away. So, um, I'm kind of the, the den mother for less lack of a better word. Each house has a teacher. That's kind of like the designated teacher that kind of, kind of, um, is the coach, I guess. But, um, uh, my, my team won the competition last month. And so the reward for winning the competition was they got rewarded with a special lunch. Well, my kids picked Raisin Cane's. And so I went to Raisin Cane's today and I picked up enough for all of them to have basically a second lunch because they all still went to their actual lunch break. And then I uh, came to class and I got to got to reward them with practically second lunch. So I did get to spend a Friday up there when I normally don't get, uh, get to be up there for Fridays. All right, so I'm putting Hauser Medium on my, my uh, palette I'm alongside Hauser Light. So I've got them side by side, okay? Got them side by side. Let me show you what I'm about to do. We're gonna do this to all six of them. We're gonna grab an angle brush. Y'all know me and my angles. I love angle brushes. Okay, I'm gonna grab an angle brush and I'm gonna double load my brush. So that means I'm just uh, put. I'm just dipping my brush half in one color, half in the other. A lot of times I will dirty up my brush and put it on uh, the whole brush. Dip the whole brush in one color and then dip the toe of the brush in another color. This time I'm going to try something different. I'm just going to double load it. Um, I want, I want to, I want to, I want to experiment with something real quick. Of course, I'm starting with the wrong leaf. I really need to start with that back leaf right there. But we'll just, we'll, we'll just call that one done you really want to start with the leaf that you cannot that it's not going to be a full leaf so this right here is a full leaf for the most part this one's hidden underneath that one so i want to start with that one so again i'm going to load my brush and i am concentrating that darker color to one side so I'm just kind of walk and I'm going in the shape of the leaf, right? I'm not overworking it. I'm not trying to do too many swipes of color, right? Again, picking up both colors. And now we're going back to this second. Let me get y'all a little closer. There y'all go. Okay, so I've got the dark color on this side. And I'm just going in the shape of the leaf. So the natural shape of the leaf. And I'm just adding little swipes of color. And that's going to dry beautiful. Look at, look at all those swipes of color. And I didn't have to do, the brush did all the work. So let me show you all another. Let's do it again. Okay. Dark on one end, light on the other. It does not matter how you're loading your brush as far as dark on which side. Just two colors, same brush. This is a whimsical design. It doesn't really need to be perfect. Okay. Do y'all see that leaf compared to this base coated leaf? You know, and do you see me reloading my brush there's plenty of paint on this brush this is what i consider messy painting okay this is just messy it's thick paint okay you're probably gonna get a little texture out of that if that is not your jam this is probably not your technique and that's okay we can all enjoy different techniques 
But that right there gets me so many compliments at craft shows. When I've gone to craft shows, it gets me so many compliments at paint parties when I'm teaching other people how to do it. They're like, oh, that was so easy. I'm like, yeah, yeah, so easy. And you didn't have to work. Like, it, you get a beautiful result without having to work too terribly hard, right? All right, remember, do the leaf that you're not going to see the entire thing, right? It's kind of peekabooing behind the other one. And then come back and do the other leaf that you see the majority of, right? Just paint in the shape of that leaf and you'll always get a result that looks pretty. They're all going to look different, but they're all going to be super pretty. Got two more. Okay. Walking it in, walking it in. Okay, load my brush, walking it in, walking it in, I love it, last one, Okay. Oh, there's one swipe in there that I don't like. There we go. We fixed it. I had the door open and I just had a fly fly across my face, which means I should probably close the door, but I don't want to because I can hear it's so windy outside. I can hear my wind chimes and I don't want to miss out on that. Y'all know how much I love my wind chimes. Late as usual. Oh, vanilla. It's okay. We're just now getting started. I had most of it basically. Hey, Dana. Hey, Carmen. Okay. So there we go. That's the leaves. I mean, we might throw a little bit of shadow on the leaves when they're completely dry, but we're pretty much done with those leaves. And look how fast we threw them together, okay? So I'm going to blow dry. I'm going to try and blow dry the majority of them. So that we can get the shading okay all we have left to do is shade our lemons and they'll be done the garland takes no time at all especially when it's a simple little shape like this so in the paint studio a lot of times because the garland doesn't take much time at all we usually paint the garland and the attachment all in one tutorial so in the paint studio you get two tutorials you get the door hanger all in one, you know, all by itself. And then you get the garland and the porch cleaner as a two for one. A lot of times because one or the other will be the same technique from the, from the door hanger. So it's not like we're having to go over it um, in depth again, because the door hanger, we've already gone through it in depth. Oh, thank you, Carmen. I love it. It's about time for them to go because they've grown out like there's about a quarter inch of nail exposed. It's time to, it's time to redo them. I just haven't had time. So I'm just blow drying these because I'm about to do some shading and I don't want to accidentally smear green paint. So I'm just drying it to the best of my ability. Plus I want you to see this green as it's dry. It's so cool. So what are y'all doing today? It is it is Friday. Do y'all have weekend plans? Y'all don't tell Mr. Wallace, but I bought flowers today. So my weekend plans are um, planting. <laughs> I bought, uh, I've always wanted a climbing rose. And today while I was waiting on, like I was saying earlier that I kind of showed some love to the kids up at school by getting them raising canes. Uh, right next door to the Raising Canes is a little mom and pop local nursery and it's a pop-up like it's it's in the parking lot behind Raising Canes they're not always it's not a building and so and I don't know how they're going to survive today because it is like I fear if it rains it may be like tornado like weather so I feel really bad for their outdoor shop that's probably going to get hit by any kind of heavy winds that we got right now 
So I've got my half inch angle. Y'all know it's my favorite. I've got my spray bottle. Okay. I've got my spray bottle. Y'all know that's, that's how we do things around here. You could also use one of these. Both of them came from Hobby Lobby. They're just fine misters. You don't want to use a regular spray bottle that you would normally use for like your hair or cleaning products. The spray is way too heavy. This is super fine. It's like um, the best. It's literally like if it was a misty day outside. It's super misty. Um, it reminds me of if you've ever been to a theme park like Six Flags or I'm assuming Disney World because I've never been to any of the Disney parks. But I'm going to assume as, as fancy as they are that they if Six Flags has them, surely the Disney parks has them. But they have those cool off stations where you can um, kind of sit and there's misters going off all, the, all over the place. That's the kind of mist that it gives off. So while Nella is working on an infant door hanger that, oh, this weekend getting ready for the, uh, oh, that just breaks my heart. I don't like hearing about babies that have passed. I mean, I don't think anybody does, but that breaks my heart. I'm so glad that they have you to be able to commemorate their little one. I have a friend who, um, in the last couple of years, I have had the pleasure of doing, I don't do a lot of baby door hangers. Okay. Started off by saying that I don't, I mean, I don't do a lot of custom orders. I don't, I'm not going to say that I don't do a lot of baby door hangers. I don't do a lot of custom orders. Um, I, I'm not set up to just take custom orders randomly. Right. So, over the last couple of years, I've had the pleasure of being able to do two for the same mama. Um, her first baby um, was was stillborn, and um, but I was able I, I had the pleasure of doing her baby door hanger, and I will. Uh, it, the word got back to me after the baby shower, and after the after the family had had time to kind of heal and, and, and process what had happened, the word had gotten back to me that mama did not keep very many things understandably. Right. But one of the things that she did keep was the door hanger. And that just, that I was so honored that, that out of everything, out of everything that they went through, the door hanger was one thing that they, they cherished. So Juanella, just know that that I didn't realize how much, I mean, I've had a baby door hanger, right? I've had a babies. I've had baby door hangers. I did not realize how much it would probably mean to a mama in a situation like that to have their baby's name, you know, kind of commemorated in such a, a respectful and, and, and sentimental way, you know? So, oh, that's just my heart goes out to that mama. But silver lining and that same mama had a precious baby girl just recently. So, and I had the pleasure of being able to do that baby's door hanger as well. So, and I, I, you know, there's, even when you don't take many custom orders, it's a very selected situation. It just depends on how much time I have. I'd never want to half-heartedly do anything. So if I know I don't have the time to devote to it, I'm not going to take it on. Uh, I'm not going to do someone that way. So I will um, usually refer it out. But I did. I did not have the time for that, that door hanger. <laughs> and it was just one of those things that when they asked me, I was like, no questions asked. Absolutely. Let's do this. Let's see. I'm going to try and do these lemons in different directions. So just making a conscious decision to, to there's not much difference in if the lemon is laying leaf side this way or leaf side this way. But I do think that when they're a little mix match, it gives a visual interest that's pleasing to the eyes. They're not so matchy-matchy along the, the garland. Okay, so there's, there's our yellows. 
I'm just going to set the, oh no, that, that one needs just a little bit more. Let's go on. This is Marigold. If I haven't said it already, Marigold is my absolute favorite color to use to shade the, the pastel yellows that I like to use. Marigold, antique gold has a little bit more of a brown tone. So if this was, if this was kind of a, a rustic look, or if it had a lot of, of reds in it, I would probably go with antique gold. But since this is bright and summery and springy, no, then we're going to go with marigold because it's brighter. All right, so I'm going to clean my brush. Oh, you did angel wings with a heart with the neck. That's going to be precious. That is going to be absolutely precious. All right, again, with the lemons, I'm going to try and keep them... I'm going to try and do one in a different direction. So most of them, I think what I want, if it's that way, then that way, then that way, then that way, then that way. Oh, I don't think it matters. <laughs> I've already got myself all, all confused. So I'm going to do that one with that one. And then it's going to be that one with that one. And then it's going to be, hold on, let me, <laughs> go there, and then we're going to go there. Okay, yeah, we're just going to do, okay, it's just going to be random. So let's just do three. Let's just do two going in one direction, one going in the opposite. All right, so I have desert turquoise. You can also use Laguna, which is what I think is on the supply list. Or you can use um, uh, maybe even bluegrass green. I have I don't use that one too often. It's not my, one of my favorites. It's very pretty, but it's just not one of my favorites. But I'm gonna use desert turquoise. Sounds beautiful. That's very oh it is, it does sound beautiful. That net camera Carmen. Let's see. Okay. One at a time. We're going to take our mister. I'm about 10 inches away from the surface. I'm just misting it. Just a light little mist. And like I said, we're going to... Ooh, that's a very heavy... That's very heavy. So that's heavy, okay? That's really, really heavy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and move it along, okay? As long as this paint stays wet, it will move. You do not have to stay married to that. Say it's still, after you've tried moving it, take a baby wipe. Take a baby wipe and knock the majority of that paint off your brush, okay? Don't submerge it in water or anything like that. Just take a baby wipe. Spritz it again, okay? Get a little bit more water on there. Don't oversaturate it to where it's a puddly mess. There we go. That's more like it. That's what I want. Don't let it get to be a puddled mess. There we go. See? It's just got that little bit of a shadow down there. If you're wondering why I'm not going all the way around the lemon, well, a, a shadow wouldn't naturally happen all the way around the lemon, right? We're going to put some highlight on these lemons. Totally off the wall question, but last year in July, I saw you at Southern Adornments Live in uh, Dallas. What did you teach us there? I'm trying to put the artists and makers to the projects they did. We did the autograph picture frame. So what I teach, it's really hard to teach this in like a 45 minute session. Okay. Think about it. My lives go pretty daggum long, right? Um, so, and we already had like two door hangers that were being taught. So I didn't feel the need to, to be obligated to do a door hanger. And so I t typically teach um, a, a memory project, something that helps you make memories at the event. And that's one of my biggest, that's one of my biggest um, or my favorite things to do when I go out of town. I love to find a way to make memories. And so we did the picture frame where you were required to paint it in your style. 
something that expressed you. And then you walked around and got at least minimum. I challenged you to get 10 people that you, you either met in passing at one of your breakout sessions or someone that you ended up um, getting to know that you didn't think that you'd ever meet in real life. I challenged you to go across the room and get someone to sign it. Um, kind of like an autograph book or like a yearbook. It was, it's one of my favorite things to do at retreats. In fact, even if that's not one of the projects that is being done at a retreat, I will take my favorite project, whether it be a door hanger or a picture frame or something, and I will have all the people that I met. I like to have as many people sign it before I leave. It's one way for me to remember who all was there, and it gives people a little uh, a little uh, memento to take home with them, right? So that's what I taught. Usually I would teach a door hanger, but there were already at least two door hangers that we did. And so I was like, oh, I don't think people are going to want to paint three or four door hangers in one sitting. I'm going to do this one in this direction. Oh, I got you. The autograph along with the other people. It was fun to have people sign. Yes. And then think about it. A lot of people. Uh, as I was walking around the room, watching people get them signed, I heard people exchanging phone numbers and addresses and talking about sending each other happy mail or meeting up because they have realized that they all lived in the same area. It was, it was a way to get you out of your seat. You typically at a retreat, you'll sit and talk to the same three or four people that are around your area, but you really won't venture to the other side of the room. I mean, it's just human nature. So, um, I like, I'm not what, when I sit at a retreat that I, I mean, I'm talking to the choir here. I'm talking to myself. I'm really bad about that. So I like to force people to get up out their seats and say hello to a person that they haven't said hello to. It's kind of like that awkward moment in church. I don't know if your church is like mine, but there's this awkward moment. And I wish they wouldn't do it, but I get the whole reason they do it. I'm just not big on saying hello that early in the morning. But um, they, they'll say, okay, now get up and shake hands with someone you haven't met yet. And I'm like, oh, why we got to do this every week? But I totally, I totally get it. So I don't put it in the suggestion box that we stop doing it. But gosh, I just want to stay in my seat. I don't want to move. So well, I make everybody do it at retreats. So I, I don't like it so much that I make you do it at a retreat. All right, so we're going to make a shade of, uh, actually, I want to try something out. Would y'all be open to me uh, kind of test driving something real quick? I want to test drive something. I want to take some white. Just an itty bitty bit of white. And I want to do my highlight with just white. I wonder if it's going to look right. The only problem is we need to make sure that we get it super, super light. I don't think it's going to look right. That doesn't look right. That looks like white. I was hoping that it would ghost out enough to where it just looked like an overlay, but it really needs to have the base coat color in there. So what we're going to do, let me show you how I do my highlights. The yellow is going to be hard to highlight. But we'll get it done just because yellow is very white heavy already. So we've got our wax paper over here and we have our base coat color. So Sea Breeze was our base coat color, right? It's the color that we added white to for stenciling. It's, our, it's the color that I based my shadow color off of. But it's also going to be the color that I make my highlight out of. So I'm going to dip the toe of my brush in the base coat color. I'm going to add a little bit of white to my palette. Okay. And I'm going to tone this down. Hopefully to make a highlight color that complements and does not um, clash with the base coat color. That's much better. 
So we're pretty much whatever didn't get shadowed is getting highlighted. Right. So anything that, and I like to walk it in, in that deep curve right there. So I like to bring it in. Okay. So do you see the, you see the base coat color, you see the stenciling, you see the shadowing down here and you see the highlight up here. Let's do all three. Just one little mist. I taper it in closer to where the shading is. I don't want it to necessarily overlap it and be the, um, and hide it. I just want to kind of make them meet. Like I said, I like to walk it in, which means I bring my brush in just a hair. See, there's the highlight. You see the base coat with a little bit of stenciling on top, and you see the shadow right there. <laughs> Marie says, I was the back of the room sitter, loved uh, the S uh, SADL project, have it in front of my center. Oh, I have mine. And well, it was over here for the longest time, but then I moved all of my stuff around and I did put it in a box, but I put it in a box to preserve it. I did it so that it wouldn't get messed up because where I had it sitting ended up being Raylynn's favorite place to play even though she wasn't supposed to be there playing. She loved to pull, she loves to play over here. So anytime I'm not painting, she'll come over here and she'll bring her My Little Ponies or her Barbies and they'll put on a live or um, they'll teach a class. It's the cutest little thing. And then, um, so it, she would bring her drinks and she likes, she likes spray bottles too. So I was afraid that she was gonna spray it and start making the names run. And so I put it in my box that's intended for my studio for when we build the new house. And uh, I wanted it to, I want it to be displayed in there. So I was like, let me save it. Let me preserve it. Let me, let me give it its best chance of making it to the new, the new craft room whenever that actually happens. I absolutely love the colors you picked. I can't wait to see all of this together. I can't wait to see it all displayed together too, because I, you know, you see one part of the project and you're like, Oh, that's super cute. And then you see another part and you're like, Oh, that's super cute. But when you see it all come together, it's, it's like, Oh, there was method behind that madness. All right. Same situation. We're taking our base coat color, which is our pastel yellow, which in my case is banana cream, but you can also use sunny day. Dip my toe. And then we're going to pick up white. Okay. And we're just toning it down. We're just ghosting it out. Yellow is hard to ghost out only because it's already white heavy. Again, we're going to spritz. One good spritz. I'm going to start in the whitest part because you know I'm going to want to walk it out. I'm just kind of feather barely bending my bristles to this, to the wood. Okay. Barely. So right here, you see the highlights, you see the, the base cap color with the polka dots, they're barely there. And then you see the shadow when everything's dry, especially that water is dry. It is really, really pretty. Now say that highlights not showing up as much as you would like it. Let it dry and come back and let it, um, do a second layer. It intensifies. You got to think you are putting down the thinnest little layer that you can possibly put down of paint. It's watered down paint. Okay. You're basically using watercolors just made with acrylic paint. Okay. So if you're ever frustrated saying it's not as, it's not as bright or it's not as, it's not how I thought it would look. Let it dry. Do a second coat. Do a second coat you'll be surprised by how much it intensifies when you lay down a second layer. You just have, the trick is you got to let it dry. God, still let it dry. Oh, they look so good. All right, last one for this part. 
I set a goal for myself with this girl and I plan to be done before Ray Lynn gets home. Just because the second she gets home, she's going to start asking for an IC because I did tell her today that she could get an IC today. She asks every day, can we get an IC? Can we get an IC? And I tell her no, because, you know, we can't get an IC every day. And so I have deemed Friday's icy day to go down to the corner store to get an icy. Not every Friday, basically the only Fridays that she asks. Um, so she did ask this morning. I said, you know what? When you get off the bus today, I will take you to go get an icy. All right. So this one I want to add. It's dry. I'm going to add a second layer too. Because I feel like that white, like I said, yellow is the hardest to highlight. Because it is, all, and I don't like, I don't want to highlight with flat, yep, uh, flat white. I feel like it will look better. I tried it. I tried it and I don't like it. I feel like it looks better when it is mixed with its base coat color. Here we go. That's, oh, that's going to be super, super pretty. Super duper pretty. Now let's do a second coat on this one. You notice I'm spritzing every single one, even though they've been spritzed once before, that water is such a fine mist, it dries really fast. It stays wet long enough for you to do the job that you need to do, but the second you move on and do uh, work on another piece, it's already absorbed into the wood. Oh, they're so pretty. They are so pretty. The yellow ones are probably my favorite. I really thought the blue ones were going to be my favorite, but with this highlight, I don't think, I don't think I could not love the yellow ones. All right, so let's let's uh, shade and highlight the leaves, and then we'll put this thing together. So I've got Hauser Dark. Okay, I got Hauser Dark. That's going to be our shadow color. I'm going to do a very light, I'm not going to do anything that overpowers. All right, so I spritzed and I'm going to just put, keep this to the darkest side. Okay. And I'm going to make sure I go behind this leaf because it casts a shadow on that lower leaf. Now I am going to put just a little bit underneath the lemon. Okay. See how that just livens up those leaves. Okay. So let's go, let's go along the lemon. Let's make this a little easier on ourselves. Let's go along the lemon. Let's go behind this leaf. Y'all hear those wind chimes? Those wind chimes bring me so much joy. It's little things in life, right? Pretty flowers, good wind chimes, and a good cup of coffee on the back porch. Man, that would have made my day. At one point in my life, that's, that's how my mornings went. But lately, that's not how they're going. But I will get back there, right? We will get back. There we go. So that's what they look like before, okay? That's what it, well, let's see if we can get those. That's what it looks like after shading, okay? So that's before, that's after. And there he goes. There must have been a bunny rabbit in the in the yard. Uh-oh. Hey, can you come open this door back up? Open that door up? Yeah, I had it open. 
and it was given the best, the best background noise ever. You've got some canes over there for your snack. Your sister has asked for an icy, so we'll go get icies after she gets off the bus. Do you mind keeping an ear out for her? That's yours. There is two pieces of chicken. Your mother got hungry on the way home. You know how you like to say Bubba tax? Mama tax. Uh, did you take all the things out? Yeah. Uh, put it, yeah, put it in there for about 30 seconds. So anytime there's something on Raylan's plate or say he has to help her, um, chips. open a bag of chips or open a piece of candy, he will tell her Bubba tax and he'll take a bite. And, take a chip. Or take a chip. Whatever, same difference. That's a full piece of chicken. Okay. Are you, did, did you get yourself chicken on the way home? Did you get yourself chicken on the way home? I don't love think you. so. I know you love me. That's why I got you chicken on the way home, dude. Love that child. That's about the most sass I get out of that child. Wait, I love the ones. Aren't they? They're gorgeous. I know you're talking about the lemons, but I'm talking about the wind chimes. They are, they're, they're audible medicine. If I can, if I can give them any kind of, they're audible medicine. They make me feel so much better some days. So I'm just playing around. That is salt. Sea salt is salt. I was trying to find table salt, but sea salt is salt. Sea salt is table salt. I, I, cannot, I cannot get that through your and your dad's head. Also, can, when you get done eating your snack, can you take the trash out? Because I don't know what your dad threw away, but it is atrocious. Oh, my gosh. You opened the... It's you, fish. It's like fish. Who ate fish? I didn't cook fish. Oh, look at this. It was so gross. It made me shadow the wrong side. Oh, my gosh. Y'all, oh, it stinks so bad. Who ate fish? It was his lunch mix. Who takes fish to work? What know. monster takes fish to work that smells like it's that? Chicken. Huh? It could also be chicken. Because chicken don't smell like that. And if it does, gosh, I feel sorry for his stomach. Gosh, it stinks, y'all. It, it smells like it's. Y'all don't all live in Louisiana. Y'all don't all live in the South. So y'all may not get this reference. But if you eat like, if you have like a boil party, like a, a crawfish party or a shrimp party, where you, or like a crab leg party. So here we, we break out the boilers and we sit outside and eat seafood outside. It smells like there was a shrimp party. And someone threw all the shrimp pillins in the trash can and did not throw it away immediately. And I just let it ferment in my... Oh, it's so gross. I'm, I swear. That man, I love him. He's a good man. He's a good man. I need to remind myself that. My friend Lauren will tell me. She goes, what is it that you say? He's a good man. He's a good man. He's a good man that does some dumb things. But dang, he's a good man. I knew it was him. It's not, I knew it wasn't the boy because the boy doesn't, I cook everything the boy eats. I'm telling y'all, he's a good man. Oh man, it's still lingering. I can still smell it. It's awful. Everybody's banned from opening the pantry until that, that gets thrown away. I can't take it anymore. I started gagging this morning. I just didn't have time to throw it away. I was, I was on my way out to the, to get ready for school today and um i went to throw something away and i was like what is that smell i thought it was the garbage disposal though so i was like you know what i think that's i will i'll get the things that clean the garbage disposal on my way home no big deal no big deal and then i realized no that smell is traveling it's not the sink it's not the garbage disposal what is it and then when i got home today I didn't have time to investigate it this morning. When I got home today, I realized where the smell had been coming from. 
It was the trash. And it's atrocious. I'm sorry. Okay, so I'm not using a lot of pressure. A lot, I get a lot of questions about um, my, like, I tried using that technique. It didn't turn out well. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. You're probably using either too much paint, not enough water, or too much pressure. So tweak one of those three, and if it fixes it, you found the problem. Just don't do that anymore. If you didn't fix, then t go back to what you were doing, tweak another one, right? It's either too much paint, too much water, or too much pressure. Um, if you feel like you're getting a very consistent, it's not looking like a gradient, but look at this. It's a gradient from white to the base coat color because it's, it's literally transitioning to just water on your brush. Okay, super dark blue, gra a perfect gradient to the base coat color. Super dark green, to the gradient of that really fancy technique I just showed y'all. It's all it's doing is laying a light layer of paint on top of the paint that you already have. Now the magic that happens is because we're only putting paint on the toe of our brush, the rest of our brush is just wet. It's just water, right? So when we do that, so I want y'all to look at that. See where the paint, that dark green stops? It stops at the middle of my brush. It's not going all the way out here, okay? So if you're getting this border of a, a solid border going around to where it looks like you're just framing it out, it's probably too much paint, not enough water. If you're getting barely any color change at all, it's probably too much water, not enough paint. And if you're getting, again, that, that frame, the other problem that it could be too much pressure. You don't want your brush to bend like that. You don't want your bristles to be completely this way and your brush didn't sticking straight up. I'm barely sweeping. See how just the tip of my brush bends when I do that. I'm just sweeping, okay? Uh, it's like a feather-like touch. I'm just grazing the top of the wood. Okay, so there's that. Let's do a little bit of highlight, okay? We're going to take our base coat color. Remember, we base coated those green uh, Hauser light. So when we go to do our highlight, we want to take the base coat color, okay? We're adding darker shades. We're adding for texture when we do polka dots or our sizzling. We're adding a slightly lighter shade. When we go to highlight, we want to bring it back down to the median line. We want to bring it back to baseline, which is your, uh, your base color. So I'm going to bring it to Hauser light. That's what we based with. My doggo is stinking me out of the office today. I'm telling you, those stink. I'm, I, I got sick to my stomach. I thought I was coming down with another stomach bug thinking that, because I kept gagging at the smell. I was like, why is that smell so putrid? It, it's me. I was blaming me. Sheila, I was blaming me. Like the mom I am, I blamed myself. <laughs> I was like, I'm sensitive today. I bet you I'm coming down with something. I'm just overly sensitive to the smell of whatever this little thing. Is. No, was not a little thing. It was not a little thing. Mr. Wallace is trying to gross me out of this house and I don't appreciate it. Dang it. <laughs> so he will get a full ear of talking to tonight about how, how inconsiderate it is to throw wh what his, child is claiming to be seafood who leaves seafood in the trash can you take that mess outside immediately it's just and i just i do i use the word monster often in this house like last night someone turned the fan off while i was sleeping and the words that were said this morning some monster thought it was okay to turn the ceiling fan off while someone was sleeping. So guess who didn't get good sleep last night? <laughs> I already had Snorri McSnorrison in my ear. No, it's, it's all in fun. They know I'm messing when I do that, but still, I mean, let's be real.
My sniffer doesn't always work right after the, oh yeah, no, that mine has been off ever since then too. But when I smell it, it's got to be bad. No, I'm with you. If I can smell it and to the point that my body is trying to evacuate as much as it can because it thinks there's something wrong with it, that's just mean, okay? It's just mean. That's Taylor Swift level mean, okay? Let's write a song about it and make millions mean. Look at that. Just a little bit of highlight. I am mixing that with the Hauser Light, okay? So Hauser Light, a little bit of white. And I'm just lightly just giving a little frosting just a little look uh just a little glimmer of light hitting these leaves most of your leaves especially if they're kind of waxy or if they're a darker green they'll benefit from just the just the glimmer of a little bit of highlight you don't have to be super heavy with it see that got a little heavy so let's baby wipe that away a little glimmer okay doesn't have to be anything show stopping it's just a little bit of light okay how's your light a little bit of white Woo! a little bit of water Last one, and then we can start putting this thing together. There we go. All right, let's clean up our mess. Let's fold our wax paper. Oh, look how fun that was. Look, more. <laughs> it makes me happy. Okay, we're just gonna fold our wax paper and just uh, keep all that wet paint contained, throw it away in the trash can. It's, it's done. We can be done with this too if we wanted to, but I think I'm gonna hold on to it for just a little bit. Let me see what time it is. Aw, it's so relaxing and calming to watch you create and paint and bring your, I don't know, Sheila, I may be, you may be the only one that's relaxed by watching me paint. You must have it on mute because I get told that I'm loud and obnoxious sometimes, which is cool. It was just cool. I mean, I am, I am loud and obnoxious. I know, I know, I know, I know me. I'm not going to pretend not to be me, but I get what you're saying. It is fun to watch something go from from bare wood to come like be brought to life in such a oh good god praise Jesus for life and the ability to smell but dear Lord please don't make me have to smell that smell much longer oh amen oh he just like a good child just threw away his his canes container. But in doing so, open the pantry door. And I am, okay, so when you open the pantry door and you close it, all the air that gets pushed is literally coming out my face. You open that door. And I will not buy you dinner tonight. I had plans to buy you pizza for dinner, and I probably will not do that if you open that pantry door one more time. Okay? I'm threatening. <laughs> I'm threatening you with no pizza. Capiche? Okay? I can't take it. Hayden, I will throw up on Facebook Live, okay? I, 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 everything in my stomach will evacuate like it is a hurricane five, okay? Mom, you're just swinging up the deal. Oh, please don't do it. Okay, y'all, let's give.
<laughs> All right, we got this. We can do this. Let me see if I even have the right. Um, oh, twine. I have two different kinds of twine. And I prefer the other one whenever I'm doing this, but I think I, I think I can make it work. I think I can make it work. Okay, so I've got my handheld drill, and I'm probably going to have to bump y'all away for just a, yeah. And I've got a spare block of wood. Don't you dare go near it. <laughs> I'm trying to get water. I'm this close from telling you get it from the faucet in the bathroom. I don't trust you in the kitchen right now. Oh. I'm sorry that I need sustenance. That is water. I swear. Okay. Before we do that, let's do this real quick. So I like furniture pins. These are the thing that you can... Uh, la, 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 ah. All of a sudden, the texture of this makes my teeth want to grind. Um, I changed toothpaste, and my teeth are super sensitive right now. And I know that's more so the problem than the actual texture of the pen. But all of a sudden, the texture of the pen is making my teeth want to just like. Um, but you see all that mess right there? Do you see that? That's what it takes it to. It makes it look like faux uh, laser cut wood if you don't get away from the pantry. <laughs> I'm a woman of my word. I no sir. Okay. He loves to push that that's the most sass. Seriously. Like that y'all that's the worst that child ever gives. He is such a good kid. He is so much fun to play with. Like he is like he is so playful like that. When I say that God gave me the absolute best son, I'm sorry for any of you that have sons. I'm sure they're great. I'm sure they're amazing individuals. Mine's the best. I mean, it's not a competition. But if it were, if it were, we'd be handing out um, a lot of really close seconds. I'm sorry. He is just the absolute best. I love that child with every fiber of my being. People, uh, People ask me, it was like, what did you do when you were, I was like, no, we, we, he raised me. Okay. He raised me. I was a baby when I was a baby. When I had him, we grew up together and he'll even tell people, oh, we grew up together. <laughs> He's heard me say that so many times during his life that, um, that it's kind of stuck with him. It's like, oh, we grew up together. And it's just because I was so young when I had him. And then I was a single mom for so long so young and I, I was really bad about accepting help. I was real bad. And with him, I never wanted to miss a second. I wanted to be there for everything. And so, and I swear Raylan gets a different mom than he, he got. And I apologize about that all the time. I was like, man, Hayden just got such a different mom during these years. You know, she's five about to be six. And when he was five going on six, I was just a different mom and I'm, I'm a great mom. I'm not, I'm not shy about saying I'm a great mom. Mom, mom incomes absolute first in my book, but like Hayden got a totally different mom back then. And, and I'm kind of glad Raylan doesn't know that firsthand. Like she's, she loves me. She does. She loves her mama. But, um, he got an absolute different version of me. And I think it's just because I was still learning. I was still scared to make mistakes. I'm a little bit more confident in, in what I got going on as far as being a mom now and decision making. And so Ray Link is a very um, sure of herself mother. She gets a very uh, been there, done that, absolutely no kind of mom. Hayden got a lot of let's see and um, sure. We, you know, like, sure. And then realizing that's probably not what we should have done. That's probably not the best move for a six year old, you know, like probably a little too soon. Or there are a lot of things with him that I didn't let him, ex I didn't expose him to for a long time. Like there are certain movies I made it a hard no, no, you don't get to watch that. Maybe when you're 15 <laughs> and he's such a rule follower. That he, I mean, if I said no to something, it was no. And he did, he did not, he didn't test me. You know, he didn't try to sneak it. He straight up would just wait. If I, and it, I could have said it 
jokingly saying, um, maybe when you're 15, he would drop it, never bring it up again. And he, like, there have been things that I've said, maybe when you're 10, he turned 10 and he was like, Hey, can I do this now? And I've, you know, when I said it originally a couple of years prior to, I was like, I was joking. I just meant like, not today, but he, like, when I said, oh, maybe when you're double digits, maybe when you're 10, he took it for, and so that, that told me he, he knows where there's limits. He knows where the line is drawn and he knows do not test mama. Do not cross that line. She means business. So I love that about him. His sister, not so much, not so much. <laughs> she likes to cross the line. Okay. So we have cleaned all the edges up. That just takes, especially on these garlands, ornaments, garlands, all these smaller pieces that it makes such a huge difference to clean up these edges, okay? Hey, Cindy. So all I'm gonna do now is I'm going to find about where I want this hole to be. I have the holes pre-marked in your, in your template if you end up getting the template set, but uh, you do not have to hold true to those. You can put them wherever you want. Well, don't point it towards yourself. <laughs> All right. So if you, if you did what I did and you, you shadowed different sides, if you put shading on different sides, make sure, like on this one, there's the shadow. You have your shadow going south. Uh-oh. Don't tell me. That. Okay, so there's a the shadow. I love, 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 love this little tool. Especially when I'm doing ornaments. It creates the perfect size hole for ornaments. Give it back. There we go. It creates the perfect size hole for ornaments. Okay, again, the shadow is down here. But it also does really good for these garlands, especially if you have the smaller twine from Dollar Tree that I like for these garlands, which I don't, I'm out of. I'm just getting rid of the little bit of sawdust this creates. All right. So one thing you want to do is you want to seal these. If, if that's the step you want to do, you don't have to seal these. Okay. You don't have to do that whatsoever. But if you're going to seal them, I recommend you seal them now before you put them on the on the um what is that thing called on the twine okay so let me double check and make sure i truly do not have any of this twine before i start because i really do prefer that smaller twine it doesn't look like i do well shucks that's okay okay i i don't know if i'm gonna seal them I probably will. Let's seal them. Let's seal the bad boys. Let's, huh? Come on. What did I do with that piece of paper? Oh, they're right here. All right. Let's seal them. It doesn't take but a second to seal them. I like to use Liquitex. We're going to use the high gloss. And I have a tray specifically for sealing. I just reuse it over and over again. Make sure it didn't have any sawdust in it. Okay. So I'm going to grab 
just a flat brush. I am I'm loud too, and that is the problem why I like watching you. Oh, that is probably why I like watching you. You were just like, so I I am loud. So I just come from a loud family. Plus, I'm not uh, I'm kind of not hard of hearing. I don't want to say that I am deaf. I'm not deaf. I do have some hearing loss. My sister and I both have hearing loss. Um, but I mean, we hear. Like if you're behind me and trying to catch my attention, you're probably going to miss me. I'm not going to, I'm probably not going to hear you. Um, and, and when I'm in a loud area, I do tend to turn my head to the side that hears better than the other, just so I can get a better um, chance of understanding every word that's being said. But like I said, that's usually whenever it's really loud surrounding us. Oh, these turned out so good. Okay, usually I go north, south, east, and west. These are so small that I'm confident I'm catching every every little bit. Usually I go north, south, east, and west with larger pieces that um, that I'm confident that I'll miss something. So I just do that for good measure. last piece probably get my my child's attention so that he can spot his little sister for me she doesn't like it when once someone's not outside to grab her off the bus she gets worried that no one's home not that that's ever really happened but I get I totally get it I totally get the the anxiety it's so shiny right would you consider doing a series like this with watermelons well Deanna would you want one all right, let's take a vote. Anybody want a series with watermelons? If we did a series with watermelons, what would be our door hanger? What would be our door hanger? Marie says watermelons for sure, Deanna. Deanna, I mean, obviously Deanna's down. Marie says she's down. Who else wants? Okay, Anna says yes. Absolutely. Let's do watermelons. Okay, let's do watermelons. Hold on. Give me just a second. I didn't want to yell in y'all's ear. He usually has his headphones on. He can't hear me. I didn't see you. I'm sorry. Um, your sister will be getting off the bus here in just a few minutes. Can you keep an ear out for her? Oh, Lanella says yes. Carmen says yes. Anna, Deanna, Marie. Okay, let's do it. If y'all, uh, look, if y'all have any ideas you want. Oh, Lanella says watermelon and ants. We can do that. We can do that. We've talked about that before. I have a really cute ant that I've drawn up a few times, and I love him so much. He's super cartoony, and su like he's just precious. I already have an idea. I already have an idea. But if y'all want to throw some more, and Juanella says, let's do some watermelons with ants. So I'm already getting like this picnic vibe. So I'm getting like a picnic vibe. Um, Maurice is seconding the watermelon with ants. Okay. This is still a little damp, so I'm going to let everything dry just a few more minutes, okay? And then we'll throw this onto a string, okay? Marie and Deanna are both seconding the watermelon with ants. Is there any particular technique you want to try? Is there a technique that you want to... Because a lot of times whenever I plan out... Uh, I don't want to call it a master class or, you know, a big set like this. I always have a um, paint technique that's in mind. Okay. For this one, it was shading. Okay. I really wanted to showcase how I teach shading and to see if it makes, and highlighting, see if it makes it easier. 
Um, so is there a technique that you're struggling with and you would like to, to have a, a master class on? And we can, we can kind of put that into the, the watermelon theme. We can totally do that. All right, so I'm gonna grab twine. This is my door hanger twine, okay? I'm gonna grab about six feet, okay? So my span is about three feet. So I'm gonna do about two, maybe two and a half of my arm spans. Like from, like if I stretch my arms as, I know you can't see what I'm doing, but if I was trying to give the whole world a hug, like I'm just going, I love you this much. I'm doing at least two of those. I'm doing at least two of those, okay? All right, so I've got my twine. I'm gonna put my other, my ball of twine up. I get my twine from Hobby Lobby or uh, Walmart. Nothing fancy, it's just, uh, I think it's four ply. It's just ju juke twine, it's nice and heavy. Okay, I think it's four ply is what it is. Okay, so Marisa's ombre. Okay, so one else says not struggling, but picnic some buffalo plaid. Um, Marie says maybe some ombre. Would that work for watermelon, like ombre from pink? Yep, I would definitely teach y'all some ombre for, uh, for the watermelon part. Deanna says ombre sounds great. I can I can I can give you a crash course on buffalo check to Juanella. I know Juanella's got the buffalo down though. I don't know why I just pulled the biggest piece of tape that I could possibly pull. So I'm gonna just take my, my twine and I'm gonna put my tape at an angle. So I want you to see what I did. I put it at an angle, okay? And I'm going to twist my twine, okay? Not the tape, I'm holding the tape tight. Twisting my twine until I get like a shoelace and then I'm gonna twist the tape. So the twine stops about right here. So all this up here, this is just straight tape, okay? I'm gonna try and get it as tight as possible. Hopefully this isn't too thick to go through those itty bitty holes. I'm going to pick, let me try and situate these. I want them to be alternating colors, but also alternating sides. I really sit the bar high on that one that just like that maybe like that okay so I go this is probably too big yep right there I'm gonna try and skinny this up think skinny think skinny Let's get rid of most of that we not here yet all right, well, I mean, she maybe has about two more minutes, too. So I'm going to go down. <laughs> it's too thick. I knew it was going to be too thick. All right, so let me separate these plies. I'm going to take two. Did you know you can tear your twine apart like that? Hey, do me a favor, Hayden. Hold that. Hold on, we're, we're separating them. Give us, a, give us a second. All right, baby, don't try to walk as far away like that. Oh, no. Oh, no, I can hear the bus. There goes the bus. Onward, boy, onward. He's trying to help. We got tangled up. We're a tangled mess now. Oh, what tangled webs we weave. Bonus points to anybody who can finish that. Okay, there we go. All right. So the twine I like for that drill, I like it for my wire. I like it for the skinnier twine that you can get at the Dollar Tree. I did not mean for this to like become. Okay, that's garbage. Okay, I think I figured it out. Okay, here we go. Oh, 
I'm struggling riding the bus. There we go. Okay, let's just do this. That's good. That's far enough. All right. Sorry. Took a detour there. Dang, it got everywhere. Okay. So I took two plies. Okay. That's four ply twine. I just took two of them out. Okay. I'm going to do the same trick with my tape again. Keep opening the front door and closing it. He's messing with her, that's why. Hey, big girl. How was your day? It was good. You got to eat popcorn. Gosh, that's a good day. Did you get to watch a movie or, or what? Was it? I'm sorry. Oh, she ate them. Yeah, I know. No, no. Don't open it. Don't you dare open it. It's fine. Leave the trash on the counter. For all the love in the world, leave the trash on the counter. Well, the world is filled with hate. So. No, it's not. It's our job to show it love. The Bible told us so. All right. So I'm just going to what, add. What do you do? I'm making a garland. What you can do is you can go get ready for going to get an ice tea. I am ready. Because as soon as Mama's done, which is in like five minutes, okay? I want to make a fingerprint. On what? Where are you going to put a fingerprint on? Not on my lemons or not. I you know what? You know what? Hold on. Hold on. Get you, get, stick your finger in some of that paint right there. No, there's paint on that. On the paint palette. Fungies. On the paint palette. Find you some wet paint. Uh, that blue is probably wet. The green's wet. The yellow's wet. No, right here. All right. Don't touch anything. Don't touch anything. Don't touch anything. Watch this. Watch this. We're gonna go. Boop 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 boop. Now let's clean your finger off. Go wash your hands. Go wash your hands. And once I get done doing this, we will go get ices, okay? So I like to go through the top. Do you like it? I do. I love it. I cannot wait 20 years from now to get this garland out and decorate with it. Can I have that garland with my room? Maybe. I'll think about it. No, yeah. You always think. We always think about, think about, think about, think about, think about. Absolutely. Just well, let me think about it. That's not a no. That's a hold on. Let me finish what I'm doing. Yeah. Leave my mom alone. My mom alone. Hey, finally. she was my mama first. Okay, sure enough, was for hey. ten whole years. She's my mama last. I was still a kid, so I don't know what to do. But I get older, I will. I don't know what to do, but when I get older, I will. Right? Good job. Yes. That's how most of us feel. Gosh, most of us are older and we're still like, you know what? When I grow up, I'm still not there yet. Yeah, some of us know that. Some of us. All right, so I'm just going, you go down. Up, around, down. Go down. And then up. Okay. Down. Cool. And then up. Okay. Let's see if we have enough room for, oh yeah, we have one, just enough room for one more. Down. And up. So I'm about to show y'all something in just a second. 
and it's going to jog some memories from a couple weeks ago when we started this project. Okay. Here we go. There's our garland all strung up. Okay. Now, a couple weeks ago, we made this. And I got a lot of people asking a lot of questions about what the heck would you use that for? Well, now do you kind of see how they complement each other? See how you can have this kind of sitting on the mantle or on a, like just on a flat surface and then have these kind of staggering at different levels. See how they just kind of complement or they can just be super matchy matchy, right? They just kind of peekaboo out of the fabric garland that we made a couple weeks ago. Our little, our little rag swag. So Juanella, Deanna, uh, Juanella says, nah, ombre. Yeah, ombre would be the, would be great. Nah, ombre. Well, now you got me confused, Juanella. Do, are we yay for ombre or no for ombre? I got this little piece. When we set out to you to see, yes, someone finally finished it for me. Maybe one day I'll make this out of a ring. Yes, you can make that into a ring one day. All right, so that wraps up our Lemon Drop Gnome home decor set. We did a door hanger. We did a porch liner attachment. But remember, you can use this thing for so many different um, pro uh, places in your house. You can, you can use it as an interchangeable on pretty much anything that's interchangeable, whether it be a porch liner, an interchangeable door hanger. You can use it on... Um, a home sign. I have a home sign as home decor inside my house that I can use this on. You can use it as a shelf sitter or a big piece to your tear tray set. You can use it as the centerpiece of something. I like, another thing that I like to do is I like to put a stake on the bottom of it, a wooden stake at the bottom, and I use it as a garden pick. I love to use these for so many different things. Um, in fact, I might make this into a garden stake because I just bought my flowers we'll and we might put some on the front we'll porch. Make them as a stick, okay? And then today, like I said, we wrapped up with our lemon garlands. Um, if you end up making this set or any piece of this set, I would love to see it. Please share it with me. Um, until next time, I will talk to you later. Bye.